Martin Street, welcome. Welcome, Martin Street. Right now, we want to give him praise, all honor and praise, in Jesus' name. Can I have a hallelujah? Can I have a hallelujah? in Raleigh, all roads lead to Martin Street. God bless. Well, good morning, church. 
Amen. Let us stand to our feet as we have our call to worship. The psalmist said, I bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. We've come here today to lift up our hands and give God praise. Because God says, if I give up, if I be lifted up, that I will draw all men unto me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father God. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you allowed us to be able to assemble here in your house of prayer just one more time. Oh, Father God, we know that you are already in this place. And so, Lord, we ask that you would now move amongst your people and move in a mighty, mighty way. Oh, Lord God, we now place this time of worship into your hands that your all wise and your perfect will may be done. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. We invite you to continue to stand and sing along with our praise team as they usher us into the presence of the Lord.
Sunday morning worship experience. Again, a special welcome to those that are here in the sanctuary, as well as those that are watching online. 
however God has brought you this way, we want you to know that we're just hallelujah glad that you decided to be a part of Martin Street Baptist Church on this beautiful, beautiful third Sunday in the month of July. Amen? Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors with us this beautiful Sunday morning? Any, any first-time visitors? Amen. Amen. God be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 They're here in support of the Smith family for baptism this morning. So again, we want to thank you so very much. We know there's a lot of places that you could have gone this Sunday morning and been truly blessed. But the fact that God brought you this way means that you are a blessing to us. And we praise God for each one of you. And we pray that something is said or done here today that not only blesses you today, but blesses you all the days of your life. And we certainly invite you to come back and worship with us here at Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless his name. At this time, we want to call your attention to our announcements as they come across our screens. We always start by asking that you would please pray for our sick and the shut-in. We do know that we have some among us that would like to be able to get out and about, but the body would not allow them. So those of you who know that there is power in prayer, we ask that you would please pray for them so that in your time of need, somebody will pray for you. Amen? Amen. This is going to be a long week here at Martin Street Baptist Church, and so we ask that you would pray with one another and pray for these families. Uh, we extend Christian sympathy to the family of Deacon Emeritus Alfred Perry. His homegoing services will be here tomorrow. Uh, visitation starting at 11 a.m., services at 12 noon. Amen? And then we extend Christian sympathy to Brother Curtis Anderson. Uh, his homegoing services will be Tuesday uh, right here at Martin Street Baptist Church with visitation at 10.30 a.m., services starting at 11 a.m. And then we extend Christian sympathy to Sister Patricia Pat Perry. Her homegoing services will be here on Friday. Uh, visitation starting at 11.30 a.m., uh, services at 12 noon. So please, let's keep our church family lifted up in prayer during this very difficult time for these families. Amen? Amen. As we speak of prayer, we certainly want to invite you to join us each Monday morning at 7 a.m. for our weekly prayer call. Uh, you can join us by dialing 727-731-2675. You don't need a pen or a passcode. It's just a great way for us to get uh, our week started on one accord as a church family by looking unto the Lord in prayer. Amen? And membership is not required, so share it with everyone. Uh, this is just an announcement. Again, we um, want to share with everyone uh, Friendship Chapel Baptist Church uh, in Wake Forest. Uh, I will be the guest revivalist for their summer revival, which will take place August 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, on that Friday night, the 9th, they're certainly inviting all of Martin Street to come and join with us. Our music ministry will be serving on that Friday night. And so we ask that all of those that are able to join with us that you would come out and support uh, Martin Street Baptist Church pastor and music ministry for summer revival. Amen? Amen. Again, I want to say thank you to all of those that were able to sign uh, the petition on last week uh, for one week in their uh, effort to uh, get affordable housing. Uh, we, uh, to the glory of God, we got 184 signatures on last Sunday. Amen. Amen. If you still want to sign and you weren't able to sign because you don't want to miss out and not have your name in the number, uh, please see me uh, and I'll make sure there's a QR code. I can, you can scan it and you can go ahead and get yours done automatically or uh, we can give you a sheet of paper and you can sign it. And we'll get it turned in on, on your behalf to one week. But again, this is very, very important. So please, let's continue to support this. Amen? Amen. Again, we want to say thank you to our senior missionaries, uh, and we want to say thank you to each of you that contributed to the, book, uh, to the bags that were purchased on, and donated. Uh, this is a picture of them over at the Hope Center at Pullen. Uh, they went over and they donated the bags that we purchased uh, for all of those children that are aging out of foster care. And so again, uh, it's always a blessing when we are able to be a blessing to our community. And so we again, we want to say thank you to all of those that were so kind and so gracious to contribute to the effort on our fifth Sunday missions offering. Amen? Amen. With that being said, again, we want to thank everyone for their kind and their gracious support. 
uh, to Martin Street Baptist Church. Again, as Paul said to the church at Galatia, sowing the right seed always brings the right harvest. And we want you to know that whatever seed you have sown into Martin Street Baptist Church has been sown into good ground. And we do believe that in due season you will reap a right harvest from the Lord. And again, if you desire to make a contribution at any time during the service, you can do so. We have a collection box, one over here on the right, uh, on the State Street side, one in the rear of the building, and one over in the annex portion of the building. If you desire to do so throughout the course of the week, we invite you to go to our church website at www.martinstreetbaptist.org. There you will find instructions on how you can mail in contributions, drop off contributions, and make electronic givings. However the Lord leads you to give, we want you to remember that God loveth a cheerful giver. And you are never more like God than when you give. And so, again, we want to thank you for all of your kind and gracious contributions unto Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if y'all allow me just one second just to be a doting dad and not a pastor, let me tell y'all something. Man, we were down in San Antonio all <laughs> week long, just about. And we went down for our two-day graduation celebration for our daughter. And let me tell you, I got the shock of my life. When she told me that she said, Daddy, I'm going to be the honor graduate for my unit, I was just, I thought she was going to be crying, but I had to hold back from crying when I walked out there. I'm trying to tell y'all, thank you so very much for your prayers, and we ask that you would continue to pray for her. Uh, she shipped out and arrived at Goodfellow Air Force Base, where she'll be there for tech school, uh, but she has to go through a top secret clearance for the job that she has been assigned in the Air Force. So please keep her in prayer. Uh, we just thank God so very much for ordering her steps in his word. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. As we continue on in our worship experience now, we're going to have our deacon of the week, Deacon Vesta Walker, to come and lead us in our Sunday morning scripture and prayer. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Scripture come from Romans 8, 12, starting at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them that who are called according to his purpose. For whom God has foreknown, he also predestinated to be in conformed to his image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, who did he predestinate? Them he also called. And who he called, them he also justified. And those he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that is spared not his only begotten Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything against this chosen, this chosen of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. It is rather that is risen again. Who is even the right hand of God? Who also make an intercession for us? Who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, Shall persecution, shall famine, or nakedness, pearls, or sword? It is written, for our sake we are here all the day long, our poor account as sheep are the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor anything present thing to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, God which Christ Jesus and our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, this morning into your sanctuary to give you honor, to give you praise, to magnify and to glorify your holy name. Now, Lord, we are weak, but thou strong. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for loving us so. Lord, you loved us so that you gave your only begotten son. You said, Lord, whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. 
Lord, you sent your son into this world not to condemn us, but to save us from our sins. And Heavenly Father, you, you brought the blood of the cross to save my sins and the sins of the whole world was brought from your shoulders on Calvary's blood of the cross. Lord, if you hung, bled, and died, buried you on the third day, but you rose, has it all power is in my hand, it's heaven and earth. Lord, we know that you set me on the right hand side of your Father, praying for us, interceding for us, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. Lord, you said, well, one or two are gathered in your name, you be in your midst. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your provision, your, your almighty, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for our sick and our shut-in rest, you bless them. We thank you, Father, for grieving members, Heavenly Father, the Perry family, the Anderson family, and the other Perry family. Lord, be a comfort to them. Keep your loving arms around, protection on them. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you, Lord, for being connected in the Holy Family. In Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen. I 
others who you are. I lift it up in all the others who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we exalt your name. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord. marks this third Sunday in July, exactly seven years that I ascended the pulpit as the pastor-elect of Martin Street Baptist Church. It would have been July 16th, 2017. Amen. Amen. Long seven years. And I was sitting there thinking, as I was thinking about the picture of my daughter, if you had told me that day that my two girls would be in the military. I lost everything I had. <laughs> I'd have took that bet. <laughs> but God works in mysterious ways. I often say to myself as a, as, a, as a parent, I wonder why God let us have children when we see them young and dumb. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't we be different parents if we could start having kids at 50? Yeah. <laughs> have some life wisdom some experience, something to offer them other than foolishness, you know. I often say to my kids, you know, it'll be so different, man, if I was a parent now to a, a child versus when I was 25, 26. I don't know why God does that, but he does. <laughs> Amen. As we come now to preaching and teaching from God's holy word, I want to call your attention to the gospel according to Mark, the second chapter. The gospel according to Mark, the second chapter, starting at verse number one. I'll be reading today from the NIV version of the Holy Text. And there you will find these words written by John Mark. It says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing a man, uh, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the, man, the mat the man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this, that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, 
or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. The Lord, add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and especially the doing of his holy word. Eternal God, our Father, again, Lord, we thank you, praise you, and we honor you, Lord, for this tremendous opportunity that you have given us to once again come into your presence and call on your holy and your righteous name. So now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray now that you would speak to us and speak to us in such a way, Lord, that all of us might leave here today just a little bit better than we came. Speak to us, Father God, a word that releases us from the bonds and the chains that have been holding us back and holding us down for far too long. Speak to us, Father God, in such a way, Lord, that we are able to praise you as you are worthy to be praised. So now, Father God, your manservant, I pray, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross, that only you might be seen. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to my mind and you would speak through these lips of clay that I might give your word as you've given it unto me. And then, as always, Father God, I ask for preaching power, the kind of power that makes preaching easy. And, Lord, I ask all these things in your son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord and Savior in his holy and his precious name. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. For the moments that we have to share today, church, I want to put a tag on this text that says, we've got to get to him. We've got to get to him. Church, I believe because some of us have been coming to church for so very long, that either we've taken it for granted, or we've forgotten of what kind of privilege it is, or we simply just do not realize how blessed we really are. You see, because not only has God allowed us to be alive on this beautiful Sunday morning, but God has allowed us to come into his presence. God has allowed us to, to be in relationship. God has allowed us to be in the service just one more time. And I've got to be honest with you, church, because every now and then I've got to admit that I am amazed. And I'm amazed at how a loving, a righteous, and a gracious God, like the one that we serve, would even allow himself to be in relationship with sinners like us. Come on, I know we, we all, we come to church, we, we preach the word, we sing songs, we, we lift up holy hands, and we praise his holy name. But the truth of the matter is, despite all of that stuff that we do, we still make mistakes. All of us can be honest this morning and say, like, I missed the mark too. All of us, if we're honest, will say that I too have fallen short of the glory of God. Because the Bible does not say that y'all have sinned. But my Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the truth of the matter is, no matter how holy we like to say that we are, ain't none of us as holy as we try to be. So the fact that God, the one that, that sits high, the one that looks low, the, the one that has all power in his hand, the fact that God would keep looking beyond our faults. The fact that God would keep uh, supplying our every need. The fact that God would keep us still in our right mind. The fact that God would keep on blessing us despite all the stuff that we've done. That ought to be enough for all of us to look back over our life and truly say that God has been good to me. Well, let me speak for myself, church, because it's enough for me to be excited. It's enough for me to praise God because the truth of the matter is I know I don't need no preacher to tell me how good God has been to me. Come on, I, I don't need 
for somebody to stand up and testify about what God has done for them. I don't need to read the Bible about how good God has been to anybody else because if I want to know about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for anybody, I can look at my own life. I ain't too old to remember where God has brought me from. I'm not too old, church, to remember some of the stuff that God has brought me through. And because of what I know about what God has done for me, I don't need somebody to tell me to give the Lord a round clap of praise. That's one of the reasons, church, I don't come to church to be seen. I don't come to church to, to fellowship with other people. I, I don't come to church to try to impress other people, but instead, my only reason for coming to church is to simply give God praise. I can tell anybody this. It does not matter how I feel before I get here. I somehow get myself together so that I can enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his course with praise. The reason, church, I do that is because I believe I heard it somewhere that when the praises go up, that the blessings do come down. Which means that if you know that you need something from God this morning, you can't afford to be sitting there acting all quiet and holy and dignified. If you know that you need a touch from the Lord, you can't afford to keep your mouth closed because God is in this place. And you got to know that sooner or later, God is going to come down your row. If you want God to come down your row and touch you and bless you in ways that only God can, then let me help you this morning. Don't be worried about your neighbor. See, because your neighbor may not need a blessing like you need a blessing. Your neighbor may not need any money like you need money. Your neighbor may not be hurting like you've been hurting. Your, your neighbor may not have been sick like you've been sick. And so every now and then, you got to ignore your neighbor. Because your neighbor may not need God like you need God. And every now and then, you got to be honest with your neighbor and say, excuse me, neighbor, because i got to get to the Lord. i got to let God know that I'm in this place because if God don't hear from anybody else, I want to make sure the Lord hear my voice. I want to make sure that God knows that if ain't nobody else praising his name, that I'm in here praising his name. You see, not everybody going to be able to stand up and preach. And everybody going to be able to get up and sing in the choir. But here's what you can do. You can make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. You can put your hands together. You can lift your voice. And you can give God praise. Not because of anybody else, but because of what God has done for you. And so, church, as we turn our attention to our text, we see what happens when the preacher of all preacher begins to preach the word. Because nobody, church, has ever been able to preach the word and pack the house like Jesus Christ. Because our text said that when they heard that Jesus had come home, when they heard that Jesus was preaching, that they packed the house so much that they could not even get in. <coughs> There was not even room for them, it says, on the outside of the church. Here, church, is what I, what I picked up from the text. One of the things I like about Jesus' preaching is that no matter who was there and no matter what they were saying, Jesus just kept on preaching. Jesus did not let what his critics were thinking about him stop him from preaching the word. Jesus did not let what others were thinking stop him from seeing what needed to be said. Because here it is, many people do not realize this, but it is not the preacher's job to preach a word that you like. It's not the preacher's job to preach you happy on Sunday morning. Come on, somebody, I'm trying to help you now. But instead, it's the preacher's job to preach the word in season and out of season, when you like it and when you don't like it, when it feels good and when it don't feel good, because God said that the word ought to cut like a two-edged sword, which means that every now and then the word ought to hurt you right where it touches you. There ought to be some Sundays 
But I don't step on your neighbor's toe. But there ought to be some Sundays when I put these 13s on your toe. And it ought to hurt. There ought to be some Sundays when you leave here and you don't feel good about Pastor Singleton. That's all right. That's part of the job. Because the word ought to cut you. Because anybody in here that's ever had surgery before, you know if they cut you, I don't care what kind of cut it is, it's going to hurt. Sometimes the cutting and the hurting is necessary. Sometimes the cutting and the hurting is necessary so they can get something out that doesn't need to be there or put something in that is not there, and God does the same thing. Sometimes God uses the word to perform spiritual surgery on his people. Every now and then, it ought to hurt. And so, church, again, as we look at this text, as I said, we have got to get to him. So if you allow me, I just want to want, want, want to highlight a few things to, to, to highlight for us why and how it is that we have got to press our way and make it to Jesus Christ. First thing the text is tailored to teach us is we've got to get to him regardless of what's wrong with us. I want to say that again, regardless of what's wrong with us. You see, because the text does not tell us what Jesus was preaching that day, but it does tell us that a lot of people came to hear Jesus preach. The text does not tell us what everybody in the crowd was going through, but the text does let us know that there was at least one man that was going through something. Because the text tells us that this man was not only sick, but he was sick with palsy. Which means, church, that this man could not walk. But not only could he not, could not walk, that meant that he had to live with pain and he could not even do for himself. If you know anything about somebody with head palsy, you know that they needed help simply to get around. But the lesson in this text, church, is not found in the fact that this man was sick. The real lesson is found in this text in the fact that this man still made it. That's right. Despite his sickness, despite his hurting, despite what he was going through, he refused to be a member of Bedside Baptist Church. That's it. And again, I don't know what it is that was inside of this man, but there was something inside of him that made him say that somehow, some way, despite what I'm going through, I'm going to make my way down to that church so I can get to Jesus. I believe it may have been because this man heard that Jesus had the power to make a, de- a lump, dumb man talk and a lame man walk. And so this man just made up in his mind, I'm going to church and I'm going to see Jesus no matter what's wrong with me and no matter what it is I, I got to go through. All I'm trying to tell somebody is, if you live long enough, you will have to go through something. If you live long enough, you will have to deal with your own sickness and disease. If you haven't been sick yet, all I can tell you is just keep on living. Because if you live long enough, church, this body will begin to break down. Live long enough, this body is going to desire to go back to the ground from whence it came. And that's why, church, you got to make up in your mind, I can't let being sick, I can't let what's wrong with me stop me from going to church. I don't know where this new theology has come from, that if you're sick, you ought to stay home. You go to the doctor's. They go every place else, but they don't come to church. However you make it to the doctor is the same way you can make it to church. Because this is a spiritual hospital. It ought to be filled with sick people. Because Jesus said he did not come for the righteous. He did not come for those that were whole or those that were well. But instead, Jesus said, I came for those that are sick. 
when Jesus said that he came for those that are sick, he meant I come to the church on Sunday morning to greet those that are sick. When you get here, and then Lord help us. If you're sick, and if you're going through something, there ain't no better place to be than in the presence of Almighty God. Whatever you got to do. If you can get up and go to the doctor, if you can get up and go to the grocery store, then you can get up and come to church. Even with your sickness. And here it is. You can stay home. But God knows your heart. And God knows whether or not you have the ability to come. God does not just look at what we do. God looks at our heart. Whatever it is, regardless of what's wrong with you, it's a blessing to be able to come to church, even if you're sick. But the sec second thing the text is tailored to teach us is that we got to get to him regardless of how we got to get there. So what if they got to push you in a wheelchair? Better to be pushed in a wheelchair than roll down that aisle. Come on, somebody. So what if they got to help you up the ramp, help you in the door? It's better than them rolling you down that aisle. So what if you got to catch a ride? Better than riding here in the back of that hearse. Again, church, the man in this text, we are told, was a paraplegic. And he had to be carried around on a mat. He was so bad off that he could not even get around by himself. But the fact that he could not walk, the fact that he could not get around by himself did not mean to him that I don't need to go to church. I don't need to see Jesus. Something in inside of that man when he woke up that Sunday morning said, instead of staying home this morning, instead of watching it online or watching it on Facebook this morning, I got enough strength in my body to be able to go to church just one more time. And this man said despite his condition that he was going to church regardless of how he had to get there. Text says that in order for him to get there, that he had to be carried by four men on a stretcher. Here it is, church. It does not matter how you get here, just as long as you get here. All I'm trying to tell somebody is every now and then we gotta wake up in our mind on Saturday. It ain't nothing gonna stop me from getting to church on Sunday. Ain't nothing gonna stop me from getting in the presence of the Lord, regardless of how I got to get there. I might not be able to drive. I might need somebody to come pick me up. I might need some help getting in the door. I might need some help getting to my seat. But Lord, I'm here. And I thank you that I'm here. If you got to walk, then you got to just walk. God knows I've walked to church before many a days. Walked down Raccoon Road and made it right through the woods and came out through the cemetery and ended up at church. And many a Sunday mornings, we had to walk. But granddaddy said he won't ride in the car. If you got to catch a ride, catch a ride. I've caught a many a rides to church on Sunday morning. My mama would call Cooter Gal on Saturday night and tell him to swing through the trailer park and pick John up. Thanks be to God, I haven't had to be carried in, but if I got to be carried in, I need some strong men to carry me on in. There ain't nothing wrong with struggling trying to get to church or struggling trying to get to Jesus, because in the end, all that matters is that you can say, Lord, I've answered the call, and here I am. Because Somebody knows that it's in the midst of your struggles that Jesus shows up. In the midst of doing what you cannot do, God will help you. 
when God sees that you are weak, God says, then I will be strong. Jesus has already extended the invitation to all of us. It says, whosoever will, just let them come. But it's our job to accept the invitation. It's, it's our job to make up in our mind that we've got to get to Jesus and we've got to get there any way that we can. The truth of the matter is, everybody cannot get here in a Cadillac. Everybody ain't going to get here driving a Lexus or BMW or Mercedes. That's all right. Let me tell you something. If you had to walk here and somebody else drove here in a BMW, when you get here, you get access to the same God. God is not going to separate those that drove and those that walked simply because you got here. No, it does not matter whether you got here in a car, a bus, or on your feet. It does not matter how you got here, just as long as you get here. And that's why we got to make up in our mind, church, that we got to get to Jesus. Even if you're sick, even if you're hurting, even if you're going through something, you got to make up in your mind that what I really need is a touch from the Lord. You got to make up in your mind that, look, I'm going to church regardless of how I got to get there. I'm going to get there. If I got to take up two or three rows because it's lay down in the back because I can't sit up, then I'm still there. But the same way I can lay down and watch it on TV, I can lay down on that back row and watch it in person. But lastly, the text is tailored to teach us that we've got to get to him regardless of what we got to go through. <coughs> regardless, church, of what we got to go through. Because the text said that they brought this sick, crippled, paralyzed man to church. But when they got there, they saw that there was no room for them in the church. They saw that the church was so full that they could not even get in the door. The good news in this story is found in the fact not that they got to the church, but instead that they made up in their mind that we've come too far not to get in the church. And they decided to themselves that we got to get to Jesus and we got to get to him regardless of what we got to go through. And the text said that these men thought to themselves, that's when they said, look, if we can't go through the doors, there's got to be another way for us to get into the presence of the Lord. That's why I know, church, that these had to be brothers. They had a little talk with themselves. And somebody thought to themselves, go get a ladder. And somebody said, we're going to go up on the top and we're going to tear the roof off of this place. Y'all know, know the song. I ain't going to go there. All I'm trying to tell you is when you come into the presence of God, and when you come into God's house, ain't nothing wrong if you decide that I'm going to tear the roof off of this place. Because let me tell you now, because some, some of us, it's a struggle just to get here on Sunday night. It wasn't easy for everybody to make it through the week. Everybody don't know what your struggles are, but you know when God knows. And after all it took for you to make it here on Sunday morning, you ought not let anything stand between you getting to God. You ought not just be satisfied in making it to the church. But instead, when you get here, you got to sing your song till you can't sing it no more. You got to shout till you can't shout no more. And you got to shout until the roof begins to fall off this place. And if people are looking at you, let them look. People are talking about you, let them talk. As I always say, they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. And they don't have any blessings to rain down on you. I'm sure that people were looking at these men as they were tearing the roof off the place. 
I'm sure that people were looking at these men as they lowered that man down into the presence of God. But despite what they were looking, despite what they were saying, he made it to Jesus anyhow. And that's what you've got to say to yourself. I'm going to Jesus regardless of what anybody else has to say about me. Regardless of what I got to do. Regardless of what I got to go through. Something tells me, church, that these men... They went through everything that they went through because they realized that this crippled man was desperate. And if there's anything that Jesus loves, he loves Christian desperados. Jesus loves people that, that are desperate to get to him. But every time I read this, it makes me feel like this man is akin to the woman that had an issue of blood. Something in my sanctified imagination tells me that he had been the doctor after doctor. He had seen everybody that he could see. He had spent all the money that he had. And he finally heard about Jesus. The Bible said that when he finally got to Jesus, that he could not get all the way to him because of the crowd that was there. That's when these men said, look, we've come too far. To turn around now, we've come too far not to make it to Jesus. So regardless of what we got to do, regardless of what we got to go through, we've got to get to Jesus. Like that woman who had an issue of blood, the Bible says she had to crawl and press her way through the crowd. This man decided that they were going to climb up on the roof and tear the roof off the place in order to make it to Jesus. What that ought to tell all of us is sometimes that in order to get to Jesus, you might have to go through something. Because the truth of the matter is God ain't always going to find the people he's looking for sitting in church. Some of us in here, to be truthful today, we got to say that, look, God didn't find me sitting in church. But in order for me to get to Jesus, I had to go through something. Some of us had to go through a few marriages, a few relationships. Some of us had to go through having our hearts broken. Some of us had to go through losing a loved one or going through drugs and alcohol. Or some of us had to go through some stuff that we don't stand up and testify to. Good news is, regardless of what you had to go through in order to get to Jesus, you can stand up and say, I made it. I pressed my way through the crowd, through everything that I had to go through, and I made my way to Jesus. I may not have got all the way to touch him, but I got close enough to touch the hems of his garments. When I touched the hems of his garments, he made me whole. In other words, church, as I get ready to close, don't let your condition, don't let what you're going through, don't let what you're up against stop you from coming to Jesus. I think it's one of the worst things that we can do is wake up on Sunday morning with strength in our bodies, sense in our minds, and make the choice to sit down on our blessed assurance and not go to church. I wish I could tell you how many church folks I know testify that they ain't, they ain't never missed a day at work. Get there 30, 40 minutes early to drink their coffee and read the newspaper. Somehow come Sunday morning, they just can't be faithful. Coming to church like going to work. God gave them the job, but they just can't be faithful. And then they get sick. They want to call on Jesus. They don't want God to take any days off when they're sick, when their child is going through something, or when they need something from the Lord. They want to say, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. God is asking, how faithful have you been to me? Oh, how our life would be if God was as faithful to us as we have been to him. God don't treat us like we treat him. God says, despite everything that you have done, I'm still going to be there in your time of need. We got to say to ourselves, if Jesus could go through what he had to go through, then why can't I go through something for him? My Bible says that Jesus, he went through being talked about. Some of us, we'll fall apart. Somebody say something bad about us. 
We'll stop coming to church if somebody say the wrong thing about us. We don't even like them. If they say something bad, we still ain't coming. Them people down at that church, I ain't never going down there. One person said something about me I didn't like. One person looked at me in a way I didn't like. As if that's why you were coming in the first place. Jesus went through the illegal trials. He went through grieving in Gethsemane. He went through the agony of the cross. He went through going down into a borrowed tomb, stayed there Friday and Saturday. But despite everything that he went through, he still got up early Sunday morning. With all powers in his hand. Just knowing that alone ought to make us press through when we're going through and say, look, I got to get to Jesus. It's Sunday morning. My Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I don't know how many people are going to be there, but Lord, I'm going to be there. Regardless of what's wrong with me. Regardless of how I got to get there. Regardless of what I got to go through, Lord, I'm going to be there to worship you. Come on, let us bless the Lord this morning. Y'all know I'm a very transparent pastor. And that's, I think it's a good thing. Some people say it's a bad thing, but that's all right. We should have as many people on every Sunday morning as we have in a banquet who'll be serving food. Man, I've been here seven years now. I should all be able to speak the truth. We should never have more people in a banquet than we have in a church service. I'm telling you, we're living in some of the last and evil days. All of us better get our house and get ourselves and get our lives in order. Every time we turn around, somebody else is going home to glory. And sooner or later, death is going to be knocking on our door. And we're going to have to stand before God. And we're going to have to to get, hear God and give an account for why we have done or failed to do what God has called us to do. I don't think God is going to be pleased with some of the things that we have done. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray that you would just help us, Lord, in ways that only you can. Help us, Father God, to remember what a blessing it is to be able to wake up and see the dawning of a new day. What a blessing it is, Father God, to have sense in our minds and strength in our bodies. Even if that strength is fading and weak, whatever you give us, Father God, is still a blessing. Help us, Father God, to remember what a blessing it is to be able come into your presence and call on your holy and your righteous name. Lord, help us not to ever take these worship opportunities for granted. Because one day, Father God, we will no longer be able to worship you. One day, Father God, we too will have to cross over to the other side. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would continue to search our hearts, search our minds, Father God. If there's any sin in us, forgive us, Lord. Help us, Father God, to be the men and women of God that you have called us to be. Help us to be that beacon of light in this dark world. Help us to be the salt of the earth, Father God. Salt kind of salt that gives spiritual flavor to everything that we touch. Then, Father God, again, we pray for the sick and the shut-in. Lord God, we pray for those that cannot get up, cannot get out. Lord God, we pray that you would go to them, God, Father God, that you would minister to them in a way that only you can. We pray, Father God, for the bereaved and brokenhearted among us. Lord, this is a difficult week for this church family. This week, Father God, we say our final goodbyes to 
three good soldiers. Soldiers that have been on the battlefield for you a long time. And for Lord God, we pray that you would be with their families. We pray that you would be with this church family during this very difficult time. But Lord, as you replenish the earth, you're always faithful to replenish your church. So God, we thank you for these new members that you have brought to us. And we pray, Father God, that you would continue to strengthen and undergird them, that you would continue to order their steps in your word. And Father God, we pray that as a church family that we will continue to wrap our arms around them as you have wrapped your arms around us. Help us, Father God, to help them, Father God, with their Christian walk and their Christian journey. Help us all, Father God, to be able to come together on one accord that you might continue to add to the church daily such as to be saved. So, Father God, now again, we thank you and we do praise you for all that has been said and done here today. Lord, we give you glory, we give you praise because, Lord, you deserve that and know so much more. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. We now open the doors of God's church. Is there one here today that has heard the word and said, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Christ while I still have time. Is there one? Or maybe there's one that says, I've been saved, but I haven't been living a saved kind of life. What I want to do while I still have time is I want to come back to Jesus. I want to come back into his presence. God is standing and waiting with open arms saying, whosoever will, just let him come. Regardless of what you've done wrong, you can always come back to Jesus. Lastly, and maybe there's someone here today that you've heard the word of God. and You've said, look, I want to be a member of this church. I want to be a part of what God is doing. I want to go where God is taking this church. If you're here today and you want to be a member of Martin Street Baptist Church, we'd love to have you. Is there one today? Amen. Well, let us put our hands together and thank the Lord for the blessing that he's already given unto us. Today is a wonderful, wonderful day in the life of these individuals that we bring forth and in the life of Martin Street Baptist Church. It's always a good thing when God allows individuals to come and be baptized and it's when God connects individuals with his church so that all his children can be under the covering of his blood. And as I always say, you know, this is a great time. The way people will be going forward is the way that they are received in these times in the church. And so as we call these individuals forth, we pray that we will receive them in the joy of Jesus Christ. Amen. As they become members of Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen. And come on, put our hands together. We can do better than that. Oh, man. Amen. So we're, we're now going to ask the Smith family if they will come forth. Amen. God be praised. Brother Wesley, amen. Amen. Sister Audrey, amen. Y'all come on down. Amen. For those that were here this morning, you know that we had baptism, and these two young people came forth and confessing their sins and their belief in Jesus Christ. They were baptized this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we want to certainly thank God for them. And all of us who have walked this Christian journey, you know that there is rejoicing in heaven. Amen. But there's a devil here on earth. And you know that he's going to do all he can to try to trip them up and take back what the Lord has given to us. It is our job to help them with their Christian journey, to be there for them, to lift them up in prayer, and to help them as they go along the way. Amen? And so in honor of this occasion today of them being baptized, we do have a certificate for them.
It's the certificate of baptism. It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, Mark 16 and 16. This is to certify that Victoria Alexandria Smith was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost on this 21st day of July in the year of our Lord 2024 at Martin Street Baptist Church. It's signed by myself, Dr. Sean J. Singleton, pastor, Deacon George Curry, chairman of the Deacon Ministry. And it says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, Romans 6 and 5. There's a certificate for Victoria Alexandria Smith. And one for her brother, Oliver Pierce Smith. Amen. Well, God be praised. And again, along with uh, candidates of baptism being baptized, they're also received into the full membership here of Martin Street Baptist Church. And so we do have certificate of membership for all of them, including Victoria and Oliver. And the certificates of membership read, certificate of membership, this certifies that Victoria Smith has publicly confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and has been received into the full membership of Martin Street Baptist Church on this 21st day of July in the year of our Lord, 2024. And it's signed by myself, the Reverend Dr. Sean J. Singleton, pastor, Deacon George Curry, chairman of the Deacon's Ministry. And again, we have one for Victoria. We have one for her brother, Oliver. And their parents also, amen. Can we bless them? Sister Davina. And brother Jimmy L. Smith, Jr., amen. And then we have one for brother Wesley Totten, amen. I'm hoping God's going to cleanse him of being a Redskin fan now, too, so. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Cast all bad things away. <laughs> and then we have one for Sister Audrey Young. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We, the whole spectrum here today, and this is a great and joyous day again in their lives and in the lives of our church. And so again, y'all know how we do this. We're going to pray, and we're going to pronounce the benediction, and we're hoping that everybody will come around and give them the right hand of fellowship and welcome them to this loving, wonderful church family. Amen? Amen. Let us stand to our feet. God be praised. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, Lord, for everything that has been said and done here today. Again, Father God, we pray that it was not for any manner of show, but that your name might get all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Because, Lord, you deserve that and so much more. Father God, we pray your blessings upon these new members and their families. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to order their steps in your word. Father God, we thank you for what you have done. And we know, Father God, that there's still yet great things to be done. And so we praise you in advance for what it is that you still have in store for us. And now unto him who's able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding ecstatic overwhelming joy to the only wise God our Savior be dominion and power both glory and majesty this day henceforth and forevermore and let us all say together Oh, make sure to give them a, a hearty right hand of fellowship. Amen.